Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I'm Muhammad Adnan and in this video series we are back again with interview questions and answers. This time we are taking into advanced level of Power BI questions and moving towards Microsoft Fabric. So in future you will see a lot more questions towards Microsoft Fabric. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel or if you are new to this channel just click on the subscribe button because almost 90% of my viewers are not my subscribers. That's not a good sign, but I highly request you to click on the subscribe button and also like and share this video with others so that they can also learn something from this video series and from my channel and get ahead in their career. So this can be a kind of good date for you. Please take care of that. So now just refreshing our knowledge here from back to basics. Just one or two questions and then we'll take it further to the experience level. This is not a just ordinary questions and answer because I have taken almost like 250 plus interviews in the last two to three years. But I have made these kind of questions for the experienced candidates. So I thought to share this video with you, with you people so that you can also get well aware of that. There are some tricky questions which I used to ask and majority of the people are not answering that. So we'll just want to clarify that answer as well. So back to basic, what is calculated columns versus measures? So calculated columns is nothing but we need to create within our data model so that it can calculate a row by row level. So that is what it is. Whereas the measure, it can be helpful in a scenario where we want something dynamic calculations. And this is going to be visible only if you are using it into a visual. Whereas the calculated column, it's visible on the data model itself. As an example here, you can see the calculated column, which is profit equal to sales minus cost. So which is the revenue minus cost. That's a calculated column, which is going to add in the model. Whereas the measures is calculated basically total profit equal to some of this particular column. So the calculated column will go row by row and the DAX measure, it actually goes by the context level it can be filter context it can be at row level context it depends on the visuals what are the data columns which you are adding up here so the next thing here what is composite model in power bi so composite model is nothing but its combination of direct query tables and import mode tables here usually we used to have two different modes now after fabric it's a different story we have a multiple uh, storage mode like direct query import mode and direct lake as well which is a live connection another one but for now uh, we'll have this only two modes which is direct query and import mode if two different kinds of tables available in the model plus two different sources like the direct query what you are keeping up here is coming from your sql server databases whereas the excel file which you are importing it into the power bi model which is an import mode so if you made any relationship between these two kind of tables, then it's called as a composite model. So that's what the reference here. And when it can be useful, it depends on your use case to use case. As an example, you have a daily transactional production data uh, where it is coming up live from the production. Whereas you have the planned target for those production lines and you can make it this information in an Excel file and you want to import that data, which is not going to change even for the month itself then at that time the daily transaction can come from the SQL server and Excel file can come from the planned data. So both the things includes you can build the report that's called a composite model. So now here the next question is what is hybrid table in that case? So hybrid table is nothing but the combination of direct query and import mode within the same table. The composite model is actually different, right? It is actually two different tables whereas the hybrid table is one single table it contains both import mode and direct query. So that's the difference here. So this is can be a useful scenario. Like if you are not changing the data previously, like in the past week and before onwards, you're not changing any data, but only you want, you are changing the data from the current date. Like for example, the stock merit, you can say, so the old data is not going to change. Only the recent data is going to change. So in that case, you can use the hybrid tables in this scenario. But I'm just giving an example. So you can also use that as a baseline for this one. So this can also doable in the reverse way. Like you can keep the old partitions as a direct query. Whenever user need those information, they can go and fetch the data. 
whereas the current and previous one week of the data this can be in that import mode so whenever you refresh your model it will just refresh only the six days of the data whereas the old data whatever the user need then they can go with the direct query option this is an example so this purely depends on how you can go with use to case here use case to use case it will change so nicola is actually uh, one of the expert uh, gurus in power bi world so you can have a check into his blogs he explained about these two things very clearly and some of the video which i'm talking about is also available on my youtube video you can also check out those here i will try to add those video links in the description of this video so the next thing here is what is calculation groups in power bi this question many of the people got confused about that so they are actually confused about creating a data group which is also available in power bi so they thought you can just click on that column and then they can have an option of add groups which is basically the bins kind of in the list kind of thing right which i have made a separate video on that so that actually they convey during the interview answers but this calculation group is not that one i'm just talking about this is the one which initially it was created only during the tabular model which can be useful created only using tabular editor but in the recent update in power bi it is also added within power bi itself you can create directly within power bi itself so what it actually helps is if you want to do kind of calculations like ytd qtd mtd kind of thing and you want to do this for multiple measures like you have a sales measure you have a quantity you have a revenue you have a profit so four measures and four kind of scenario ytd qtd mtd and wtd for example so three four into four 16 measures you need to create but instead of this you can just create a calculation groups and you define these four metrics and you create four base measure which is the sales revenue profit and quantity and in the matrix visual you can just drag and drop those measures and calculation group it will do this job automatically you don't need to create all these things you just need to create four plus four eight measures is fine so the rest eight is actually saves your work so this can be a really helpful scenario and also you can select multiple options whatever you want to show on a particular visual like if you want to show only qtd and mtd not the wtd or ytd you can also skip those things here you have that much of flexibility in this calculation group property here so this is an important feature in uh, power bi you haven't tried that i recommend you to go and check out those videos as well to practice by yourself and this is highly recommended uh, feature if you are building a financial report or any kind of analysis report which covers mainly on the time series data here and this will not applicable only for this particular scenario i'm just giving an example this can be helpful in other scenarios as well where if you want to repeat the same calculation but with a different parameter and filters it can be helpful in that cases as well so if you want to know about what are those cases please let me know in the comment section below i will try to explain a separate video about that what are the use cases of calculation groups where you can use not only just time series but also in other factors as well thanks for watching this till the end if you haven't subscribed or like this video I request you to like this video, subscribe to my channel and share this video with others so that they can also get something new or learn or fresher their knowledge from here. So until then, see you in the next video.